<laughs> All right. Are we ready? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um dear all welcome to this session this is going to be all about how to remove barriers for women innovators and we can never talk too much about this topic because the numbers are not in place yet when it comes to reaching equality and diversity in innovation and this is a key topic for eu and eic and we need to mobilize and make sure that we capitalize on all the talent in Europe moving forward. And honestly, it should be a no brainer because as the numbers of studies have shown us is that A, companies led by women on average perform better in the long run. B, women led companies outperform the market in terms of median revenues at later stages and tend to operate in areas of higher societal impact. And that's what we want. And C, private technology companies led by women are more capital efficient, achieving a 35% higher return on investment. And when ventured back, 12% higher revenue than startups run by men. So this is how we're going to spend the next 50 minutes together. Very soon, you're going to meet all the panelists. And now you're going to meet award-winning professors, researchers, CEO, women it's worth listening to. And then we will discuss the barriers and what can be done. And I also hope that the women will share some more personal experiences on how you've actually overcome the barriers to inspire others. So let's just begin and meet the panel women we can learn from. So ladies, please introduce yourself briefly, who you are and what you do. And let's start with you, Luisa. Is Luisa here? Yes, I'm here, but now I was muted and now I'm unmuted. So uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Anita. I am the first one, so I have some troubles at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you asked to introduce ourselves. So my name is Lisa Prista, and I'm the acting director of EASM. EASM means uh, European Agency for, uh, for SMEs. Uh, this means that uh, we are implementing innovation and research programs that are uh, financed at European level. You know a lot of them. So one of the most important ones here at Horizon 2020, where EIC or the Innovation Council makes part. And the other one is COSME, that is a program that is entirely dedicated to the competitiveness of SMEs. So in EASMA, I'm the acting director, but I have also another role. I'm an ambassador for gender equality. And uh, I've been all my career very, very committed uh, with some success, I have to tell you, in increasing uh, the participation of women in our program programs, research and innovation programs. I have to tell you also that I'm very lucky because I'm in a position uh, that I can and I have the responsibility to accelerate the process. And that's why I'm very happy to be here uh, today with you. Excellent. Thank you, Luisa. Um, maybe we'll move on to, to you, Sandra. I'm uh, Sandra van Vlierbergen. I'm a professor in uh, Ghent University, active in the department of uh, organic and macromolecular chemistry and I also have a uh, 10% uh, professorship at the Free University of Brussels. My main uh, expertise is related to development of biomaterials, polymer-based biomaterials uh, to serve uh, a plethora of uh, biomedical applications. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Valeria? Good afternoon, Anita. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Valeria Nicolosi. I'm a professor of nanomaterials and advanced microscopy at Trinity College Dublin. And I'm also part of the advisory board of the uh, EIC. Uh, I'm a researcher, I'm an innovator, and I have the privilege of uh, shaping the new generation 
of innovators and scientists uh, at Trinity College. So I actually am very, very passionate about my um, my mentoring role too. Yeah. And and Judith. Hi, good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, my name is Judith Cubedo. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Gregal Diagnostics. And, and well, I was, I was while, while running my PhD thesis, we identified a novel biomarker of cardiac ischemia that could uh, break the, the barriers in the early diagnosis of these events, like heart attack, for example. And so I decided to move forward with this project and to bring it closer to, to patients. And this is the reason why three years ago we created the company and we are now running a clinical trial for the, for the validation of this biomarker and to bring it closer to, to the market. Excellent. Thank you. And then it's uh, Christina. I think, Christina, I think you need to um, put on oh, yes. <laughs> So thank you so much. Uh, great yeah. pleasure to be here. I'm Christina Fonseca. Um, I'm based in Lisbon, Portugal. Um, I am an entrepreneur, so quite different uh, than, than my panel colleagues. I co-founded a software company before that became quite big. The name is TalkDesk. Uh, it employs more than 1,000 people today between Portugal and the U.S., and more recently, I'm uh, super proud to be running my second company, which is Cleverly, uh, funded by also by the European Union and their DIC program. Um, and we apply artificial intelligence to cus the customer service industry to have uh, uh, these people work uh, cleverly, meaning eliminating a lot of manual work and unproductive work that still exists today. On the side, I also run a venture capital fund so the, the mission of empowering and funding more women is also something I deeply care about. Um, so that's it. Yeah, that was not a little bit. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> You're actually a serial entrepreneur because one thing is that there's a few female entrepreneurs. You are serial and on the side you're doing venture. Yeah. <laughs> I what? mean, we need more, right? That's what we are going to talk about today. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, I think that's more than good enough. Um, and this is also one of the reasons why we have this panel is to actually meet you and, and you know, to connect with all of you ladies on LinkedIn. I really recommend that for the listeners to connect to the women here on, on LinkedIn. So you, you probably have, I also see that um, uh, for if you, for example, take... Uh, um, uh, uh, Magdalena, uh, you've done yeah. an excellent <laughs> job on the Green Deal. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> and the Green Deal is really important for Europe moving forward. I think Europe is setting the standard here. Uh, and right now it looks like women is running it, huh? <laughs> 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 With this panel. Okay. So um, I want to go on uh, asking all of you uh, three main questions. And I'd like to start with you, Luisa, uh, because as I mentioned in the beginning, the numbers are quite clear. And this is not, uh, um, this is not a typical thing for one country. I think this goes for all of Europe. It also goes for outside of Europe, that women are still underrepresented as researchers, as entrepreneurs, investors, and business owners. Um, I mean, you might look to Norway and think that we are 100% equal, huh? Well, let me tell you, only 13% of the businesses in Norway are run by women. 13%. That is not a lot. We have a lot of women in politics, but not in, in, in business. So I'm, I want to ask you, Louisa, what is uh, EC and EIC doing in particular to make sure that we make some changes here, that we get to capitalize on the whole talent base in Europe? Hi, uh, Anita. This is a very, uh, a very complicated question. And in <laughs> fact, uh, the answer should be very long. Uh, but uh, I think that we must be very positive. Myself, I'm a mechanical engineer from Thermodynamics, and you said to put our, our experience inside. 
and in fact i work for a long time in technology in the private and uh, in the public sector mm -hmm. and as you all a few because i was also a researcher uh, i experienced a long list of barriers that uh, we cannot uh, that there is no reason now to to explain here uh, but uh, however uh, during all these years i think that we all all of us witness as well a progress done in the field and uh, you agree with me and uh, i also have to tell you that the commission the european commission did huge advancements in the last 20 years in research we start by research and now then uh, then innovation now we are going back uh, we are going towards towards investment but uh, you presented the the figures and the figures are far from being uh, optimal we are not in a sustainable situation and the conclusion is that action is still very very needed so uh, what i have to tell you is that uh, we are at the commission uh, perfectly aware that women under representation in the tech sector because we are concentrating now in the deep sector is not only a matter of gender equality uh, and it's, uh, but it's much more it goes beyond this and this is a matter of quality of research and i know that that are researchers that are here the quality of results and mainly is an economic and a social uh, uh, matter so we cannot uh, uh, this uh, this issue as is not yet entirely acknowledged and normally when i'm talking about these issues these issues are considered just uh, uh, women matters those are women issues and everybody is forgetting that is about society you in your in your you and it in your uh, presentation you present uh, some very striking figures yeah. <laughs> that are yes that illustrate that this is not true that in fact women-led enterprises are in generally better than the others so this is a clear yeah. a clear economic issue it's clear a, a economic business case so i have a question that maybe it's very simple and very naive but uh, if there is evidence because the figures that you gave came from a study from the ib it's not that you are coming just with figures like this these figures that represent an evidence and uh, uh, if there is evidence that women uh, led enterprises are performing better than those by men uh, yeah. and that they create they create better revenues better uh, more jobs and so on uh, is is evident that investing in a women-led enterprise is a better bet yes mm -hmm. so why is it not happening this is mm. this is strange this is bizarre but we have a lot of questions on this a lot of a lot of answers on this and normally the answers because this is not the only question the, the answers are related that failures in the system so the system has some failures and what the commission is doing is really tackling uh, these failures and this is what the commission is being doing uh, for a long time so the first step is to identify the barriers the second step is to identify the measures and the third step is implement the measures the measures that i'm talking about are of different uh, um different types the first ones that are more top down and maybe those more efficient for the moment are the policy measures and the policy measures they relate to equality to the employment and the innovation and they have to be implemented by member states and the commission and by uh, all the institutions at the same time the second level of measures are more what we call self soft measures and sometimes people consider that soft measures are enough they are not enough but they they are awareness networking coaching mentoring those are soft measures that are very important but they are not enough and the third type of measure is a very important measure is financing target measures to support women in the early uh, in the early stage Hmm. this is really very important but more importantly is that all those measures you cannot just apply one they have to be yeah. applied together and they have to be not done in isolation but they should complementary be complementary and really synergetic and what the commission is doing uh, is a, a huge portfolio of measures there are some that are related to the ic and they've been very very successful i just want to give you uh, an example 
uh, mm -hmm. that I consider very, very important. Uh, one year ago, in uh, April last year, and this is related just to the IC Accelerator, uh, one year ago, last year, we, we had a panel like you, uh, it, were, it was a, a bigger panel, and uh, the panel was dedicated to women in tech and also to define some measures that would improve the participation of women in the IC. Why? Because the participation of women in the IC was just 6%. We used to say less than 10, but the truth was last year in 2000, in April 2019, it was 6%. And this was a problem. Of course, it was a problem. We addressed that problem. We had the panel. The panel came up. We worked very hard. The panel came up with a list of measures, concrete measures to be implemented afterwards. Uh, and one of them uh, uh, that was a top uh, a top down measure had to be of course discussed further and had to be discussed with the member states mm -hmm. it was finally approved and it was included in the work program of the accelerator mm -hmm. so it was uh, uh, implemented and this measure was implemented in may this may mm -hmm. so in one year and one month uh, the result was that the participation of women changed from 6 to 34. Yeah. So you see that, yes, you see that, that, yeah. that, uh, that the top measures are very, yeah. uh, are very useful. The measure was a very simple one, was just to facilitate all the, 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 the enterprise-led women that pass all the threshold, at least 25% to come to the face-to-face -face interview, but it was enough. And it will be, uh, and it will be in uh, in the future. So this was an amazing measure that the Commission had the courage to apply as a top-down measure, and uh, this is the proof uh, that it works. We have all other measures that uh, are in uh, also in the pipeline and other are already already established related to the IC, like gender uh, gender parity in the IC interviewers, the juries, and also in the juries of the the Fund Investment Committee. Uh, we have we are now monitoring uh, gender balance uh, uh, across the program. If we could not measure, we could not have a, a case. Uh, now it's uh, we have KPIs. Uh, we have a community of women founders and researchers supported by the AC. We have the AU prizes for women innovators, and Judith knows very well how good it is. Uh, we have uh, a human leadership program that is uh, launched by the Business Acceleration Service, and and more uh, measures will come. Yeah. I want also to mention that the other program that I was talking about at the beginning, the COSM program that is uh, related to the, uh, the uh, competitiveness of SMEs, uh, launched also some measures that are supporting the ecosystem. And the ecosystem, you cannot forget the ecosystem. And uh, in fact, the, uh, the European, uh, uh, the Enterprise Europe Network has been very active, in particular in a sector that is women uh, entrepreneurship, the second group on women entrepreneurship, to develop, uh, uh, to develop or to encourage women to the participation of TIC and uh, uh, joining, uh, uh, working more in the widening countries and the Balkan countries. And uh, we had very, very good results. Uh, mm -hmm. We have also the WeGate platform, and we, that is an online community of practice that every uh, entrepreneur, male, female entrepreneur, can um, uh, can use. And uh, there you have coaching, you have support, uh, you have IPR uh, um, questions. So it it is it supports also the entrepreneurship uh, of uh, female entrepreneurs. Uh, so this is just a very small list of actions that, in fact, they were all implemented in the last two years. So you had much more before, uh, yeah. but indeed, I think that they are not over, and uh, we are we are we have to to learn about the lessons uh, from the crisis. And this is the last six months, not even. And the first, because this gives us food for thought and what we have to do in the future. The first lesson learned uh, is in fact related to the importance of gender equality in leadership roles. And the studies on COVID, uh, some of the studies were presented from Harvard Business Review, showed that countries with women in leadership 
have suffered six times fewer confirmed deaths from COVID than the countries with governments led by men. This is for your statistics. You can include in your statistics. Yeah. So something needs to be done also. Absolutely. Here. The second lesson learned, the second lesson learned is that women are more likely to invest in tech companies with societal and environmental impact. So it's where values and propose a fun company go beyond the profit. Mm. So this is also important and the investors, they should listen to us and uh, not to miss this opportunity. I don't know if they are listening to us, <laughs> but uh, this is a good moment yeah. to invest in tech for good uh, women led enterprises. And the third uh, and the third lessons learned is the confirmation of the increasing role of digital technologies in everything that we do in all the domains. And we still lack a lot of women uh, participation in digital. So here I have also a reflection that is in a world that is coming more and more digital, that IT is affecting the way we communicate, the way we consume, the way we learn, because now it's even used for children, the way we, uh, the way we stretch our time and our distance, the way we are changing uh, uh, our work and policies are done and also decisions are taken, out the half of the population is a site, is absent. So this is not possible, this is not acceptable, and we have to work hard on this. Our colleagues from DigiConnect, they have a lot of measures on this, and they are working really in that direction. So if we are working together, uh, I believe that an event like this that we have today in 10 years, it will make no sense, and we are doing something else, which is a great thing. Thank you. Thank you, Luisa, and, and thank you for a great update, because um, one thing is measurements. Uh, measurements kind of um, makes people understand why it's so important. But I think what you're doing now is really demonstrating leadership. You decided that you want to fix this. And A, it's not an easy fix. Uh, two, uh, it's going to be, it's going to take generations. And, and that lead me, leads me over to the two professors in the panel. Uh, because Valeria and, and, and Sandra, you are uh, professors in an area and men have gone to universities since the 1100th century. I don't know in your countries, but at least in Norway, um, it's not many years ago or generations ago where women were not allowed to enter the university. So uh, we need to talk about structural and culture depth too, because I mean, they have a step forward ahead of us another gender for what almost a thousand years <laughs> many many years yeah yeah uh, so so yeah so that i'm just i want to ask both sandra and valeria um how is it uh in the academics now because we see a lot of women uh being the best students but do they become professors mm -hmm. do they create companies do they, you know, what is it that it seems like at a certain level they show the equal intelligence and then they choose differently? They choose the old way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Sorry. Anita, I'm you actually... Didn't. I'm, you didn't. I, I'm glad that you mentioned it. So first of all, I would like to stress that um, I think it's, uh, it's excellent, all the efforts that have already been done by EC as also outlined by Louisa, it's impressive what was realized in only two years. But uh, it's true, eh? if I look within my department, we are like with two female uh, professors of uh, 10 to 12, something like that. So we are still lagging behind. And uh, I think this is also related to some extent because women still have the tendency to um, aim at taking up more responsibility related to family life, that's one. Uh, one aspect, but the other <laughs> aspect is also that this is like um, the perception from other people as well. So um, you have this sort of generalization that uh, people tend to think ah, uh, women uh, will take up more responsibility for uh, kids and so on. So they will be less flexible. They will have more time restrictions. So this perception still exists. And um, I think also being 
women, we uh, also have to um, know that it's possible to combine the two. For instance, myself, I have twin boys. Now they're 11 years old, but uh, back then it was not always straightforward, short nights and so on. I didn't have my professorship appointment yet back then, but um, let's say um, you learn to be efficient and, and it is feasible uh, to, to combine the two. And as time goes by, um, the kids grow up and, uh, and your balance, or, or let's say you have a bit more flexibility to also structure work-life balance, let's say, and to invest more time in, in research uh, in certain phases of your life. Um, and uh, for me, it uh, was actually an extra motivating factor to show like, okay, I can combine the two. And uh, currently I'm actually also working towards uh, realization of two spin-off projects uh, where the launch is foreseen for next year. And I also combine that with teaching activities and, and supervision of uh, more than uh, 15 PhD students in my lab. And I'm sure that my two boys uh, are still convinced that I'm a good mother. So we have to throw away the perception of like, you cannot have it both. Yes, you can, but you just have yeah. to believe in it. And um, you can really um, stimulate your efficiency. We can do multitasking often better than men. Yeah. yeah. So is it like you, you say, Sandra, that um, so you can be the CEO or the professor at work, but you need to lean out a little bit of the responsibilities at home because I'm just thinking, I don't, I haven't met any men, either CEOs or professors, that we've had expectations that he should also be excellent in the household. Have you met men like that? Indeed. Let, expectations? <laughs> let's say that the expectation level in that respect is in average relatively yeah. low. Although we shouldn't generalize either, because otherwise then we would uh, basically do the same as, as a lot of yeah. men do. Uh, my yeah. husband is a, is a sales director uh, in a US-based company, so he also travels a lot. Uh, in COVID times, obviously a bit less, but uh, yeah, we just plan yeah. it properly and we mail to one another each other's agendas. And um, so, and, and related to work in the household, it's uh, nicely balanced uh, between yeah. the two. So you don't yeah. have to do everything yourself. Yeah, yeah. And chaos is also okay. You know, well, know definitely. It it at the very at the early stage. Stage. <laughs> okay, Valeria, how is it? You're <laughs> I can tell you, Anita, is uh, th there is a massive gap. Things are improving. This is the good news. Uh, my own experience, I can tell you that when I started my PhD in physics, I tell you this anecdote, which was hilarious at the time. But that tells you the picture where, you know, back 15 years ago. I started my PhD and uh, I went to my first physics conference. And at the opening speech of the conference, the, the organizer stood up at the podium there and he said, I'm delighted to see that this year we have 50% increase in women participation. And we were four. <laughs> <laughs> numbers are numbers. <laughs> numbers are numbers. So things have changed, thankfully. So yeah. uh, we also lead by role models. And I think that having uh, such a su successful um, examples out there of women who actually have made it and who really show that this is possible is encouraging the new generation. And they are trying to get a little bit less um, uh, constraints, but the walls that society sometimes give. Uh, yeah. Nevertheless, we're not there yet. I mean, I got my, I was appointed as a chair um, three, four years ago now, and I was shocked to learn that I'm the first chair in chemistry in Trinity College Dublin since foundation, 1592. Oh my God, a bad time. First and only ever since actually haven't been another one. <laughs> so, uh, this is shocking. That was really, really shocking for me to learn yeah. that. But it tells you that really we have a gap. Yeah. And and it also tells us that it's possible. Somebody's got to be the first one who does it. And you just did it, Valeria. I think that's really, really good. Exactly. You have to break the walls. Yeah. And, and, and that's an individual thing. So, I mean, EU can put on everything, but we need to actually take the opportunities and do it uh, because Luisa is now putting out the red carpet here. <laughs> so we should learn how to walk on it or 
you know, exactly. color it differently or whatever, do something else with it. Okay, so we have also three CEOs um, funding their own companies. And you've actually founded growth companies. A lot of women that found companies, it's not a growth potential. It's seldom technology-based uh, and it has maybe one or two employees. So making the companies that you've made, um, Judith, um, you actually um, won the prize of women innovators in EU uh, for your company. Uh, and you're in the health sector. Um, you're doing glycardial di diagnostics. Okay. Uh, we need to learn a little bit more what that is. And then we have um, uh, uh, Magdalena. Um, I had a little peek. You, Vera? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> health. It's about the sun and the skin and everything. Uh, exactly. You're also part of the EIC Accelerator. Yeah. 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 This 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 May we were chosen for the uh, EIC Accelerator grant for developing our technology. Woo! And did you <laughs> okay? So did you have grants and loans or only grants? We have the grant and also the like equity. So we got the investors already on the board, and we will be uh, developing the new UV protector, which is safe for human body and also for the environment. Oh, that's excellent! Wow. And then, um, Christina, you're actually among Europe's top 50 most influential women in the startup arena. That is excellent. Uh, so from your perspective, you are CEOs. You do not work in bureaucracy. You do not work as, at the universities. You've built your own companies. Why? Well, because most women don't right so what in, do you do? in my case it was for me it was really clear that when you are uh, dedicating your life to biomedical research your overall goal is to bring the solutions you find in the in the laboratory closer to patients so when we discover this novel biomarker that could be a, a well, that will cover an unmet medical need in cardiovascular diseases which are still the leading cause of death globally well, I, I started to look how we could move this project forward. And this was the moment when having role models of other scientists that had been doing this, this shift from science, from the lab to, to create a company and to raise funds for this company, that was the, the most difficult part at this stage. For me, having these role models was, was very important because it allowed me to, to really realize that I that I, it was possible and that we could do it. And this is the reason why I decided to create a company three years ago. So, and I, we also had a, an SME instrument uh, to phase two project. So, so we were granted two years ago with, with, this, with this grant. And this was, this was really rewarding. And it was really a, a boost for our project because it, it allows us to, to, to reach the point in which we are right now. Yeah. Wow. And, and you, Magdalena, why did you? Well, I think that the best the best answer for telling why is just the curiosity, because like every day is different, especially in the science. And uh, I'm biotechnologist by education. I have started my studies in Poland, then I moved to France, then I was living in Japan. I was doing different projects, which were always connected with the application for the unmet medical needs and also with the some... Um, like um, I was always interested by the project which got an impact for the society and for the health. So like the ending point was really crucial for me. And um, Yuvira, it's the second uh, startup company which I'm leading. Uh, I'm not alone, we have co-founders and we have fabulous people on board. So like um, at that point, th there are two things be we, which we have discussed uh, during this panel, which Lisa mentioned a lot about the numbers and about the um the programs accelerators and everything but um on the other hand i met one situation it was like a couple months ago when i saw the discrimination of the male when uh in my company we have uh I i'm the ceo but we have also like the the other members on the board who are the male members and then we got an invitation for the conference to talk about the circular and green economy and i said to the to the to the people who were inviting okay like 
I can't do it that date. And also like the best people within my team is it's uh, that uh, it, it's the male uh, person is an expert. So like it will be better if he will go and he will explain the issue. And then I get a reply that uh, because of the, you know, the balance between the women and male during in the panel, we prefer to have you, but if you cannot, then you will not get an invitation. So like sometimes, you know, the, the, the right now, I think that the border is moving like also in the wrong direction. Like, of course, there are the walls. We need to break them. We need to inspire people. We need to, you know, be brave as well as the women. But in the same time, we need to take care that like not to, to make too much impact because we will be blamed for the things which we are not responsible for. So um, there are like also the tiny issues in between. But coming back to the question why, I think like the, the thing which is like um, from my observation really uh, important is the cultural context. Like whether we were born and upbring, uh, upbringing in the, in the family where, for example, we were motivated to be um, creative, whether we were motivated to or like inspired by the parents, by family, by friends who were doing also some businesses, it's much more easier to take the risk if the family was that the women were more oriented to like take care of the of the house of the home then absolutely they are not so you know uh, influenced by the um, by the the, the the closest environment so i think that like we need more time and in the same time uh, we need to be in some way brave and i think that this time right now it's 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 rising it's a good time for us However, we need to be also aware to not switch the button to the to the wrong direction. I th I think it's um, it's a very valid point, Magdalena, because mm. uh, um, I think mainly I think it's very good that they have this focus on 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 having a balanced diversity in panels because it's also about distribution of power, right? Uh, because it's an important signal effect for other countries or other areas where there are zero women, right? Mm -hmm. But I also see your point because you, you want to represent the best one. And in that case, I think it's really fair of you to say that, well, in this case, I would I would recommend this person. Then it's up to the event maker uh, to make the panel. But I think it it's really good for you to be clear on that. Uh, it was the situation, but like, you know, I, I like, uh, I don't want to point out that like we need to divide ourselves by gender, by the color yeah. of the skin, by the color of the yeah. hair, whatever. Like it will be crucial to take into account our competences and expertise, yeah. not just, you know, to make the um, the situation by accident. So uh, yeah. We are in the diff we are in the really lucky period, but in the same time, uh, we need to take care of the of the balance because, like, yeah. I think that it may be the other way around when there will be too much, you know, around uh, shifting from one side to another, yeah. then like the collaboration will collapse. Absolutely. And Christina, how has this been for you? Why did you decide to build companies? I mean, it's it's a great question, uh, but the answer is not that straightforward. Uh, if I look back, uh, I think it was a little bit inevitable. Um, and as Magdalena mentioned, I think it comes from my family and the support I always had around me. Uh, when you create a company, like most likely you're gonna fail. <laughs> <laughs> and then things can go 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 Better. right. So, but in Europe, especially in Europe, and I lived in San Francisco, which is a completely different environment where people are taught to take risks and to, I mean, like make like big bets. Everyone wants to join a startup, um, and then coming to Europe, um, like everyone is way more risk averse people want to get jobs at the government don't take risks at all be in their safe space and don't uh, uh, experiment that much um, and i think like at the end of the day my family being like super supportive i knew like they would respect me and love me in any way even if something i decided to do didn't work um, so i i think not everyone has this level of support because overall the society doesn't give you that 
And sometimes families also don't give you that, especially being a woman. Um, my, my parents, uh, like my father is very hands on. My parents didn't go to university, which is even more uh, um, interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And they always supported my choices. There was no distinction between men's, the man's role and the woman's role in regards to doing more technical things. So I like that had a huge impact. Um, I mean, they didn't understand my choice like but yeah. they supported it which makes a complete difference and i think yeah. for for the ones that are raising kids um it's very very important to support uh, uh the choices uh, sometimes we don't understand them um of the younger generations because that can lead to amazing businesses so i co-founded my first business right after university i went to the us i learned a lot um and things uh, uh, yeah. worked very well. Um, then, of course, we talked a little bit about role models. Um, like, there's not enough role models. Um, and for example, uh, Anita called me, oh, you're a serial entrepreneur. Yes, I am. But I never define myself like that because no. maybe I'm too shy and I, I don't want to bra <laughs> brag about my achievements. But if I was a guy, I'm going to tell you, like, that would be my right. one line introduction sentence. Oh, I'm yeah. a serial entrepreneur. I'm the best. Yeah. I've done this. Uh, I built a unicorn, which I also don't mention. Uh, yeah. So, like, we need to be better role models, like even ourselves. Uh, uh, like, sometimes I, I blame my engineering background. No, like, I'm a little bit shy. Uh, I like <laughs> to do things and prove the value of my work based uh, on what I do and not what I tell I do. So uh, 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 that's for sure a barrier um, and we should become better at inspiring other women. Uh, mm. um, and this is just an example, I mean, would be easier. <laughs> uh, but I always yeah. find like the best excuses, excuses not to put my name out there that much. Um, yeah. And then support each other. Uh, um, for example, from my uh, venture capital experience, um, I run, uh, uh, um, so now we have like two funds. So the main fund we invest in Seed to Series A. Um, in 10 investments, only one investment had a female founder. Uh, although, I mean, like we were trying really hard, uh, but there's not enough women uh, going through the funnels of uh, uh, founding companies and, and, and getting to, into top positions. Um, at, at other corporates. So what we did was we created an earlier stage program uh, where, I mean, like, it's, you, you can basically, like, look around and find companies that are uh, uh, still to be developed, so super early stage, where the pool of, of uh, uh, female founders is larger. And just going one step back, uh, we got at 50-50. Like, and, and that was not, it was just based on competence. So we screened companies based on competence, like we applied the same criteria, but we just went uh, 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 one step back to put more people at the funnel. Um, and that makes a big difference. Yeah. So uh, uh, um, like, I, I would say it's, it's a little bit uh, uh, our responsibility of everyone uh, to try to, to contribute in, in different, different areas as much as we can. Um, but this has been more or less the way uh, I've been doing it. For example, now at Cleverly, I'm very, very conscious about uh, diversity. So I make an effort to interview people uh, of different backgrounds and genders. Mm -hmm. So we have a woman leading sales and a woman leading uh, AI research. Uh, and I mean, they are the best. So yeah, yeah it's and putting more people at the funnel. Absolutely. And, and diversity is so much more than gender. You know, yeah. it's specifically when it comes to understanding the difficult questions that we have to deal with, that needs a cross-cultural understanding. We need the engineers and the economists and the philosophers, and, you know, it's a much more complicated way to solve the issues now. So a diversity, when it comes to subjects, is as important as, uh, as, as gender, but also age. Um, having uh, the juniors combined with seniors, not in a perspective where juniors should be lucky to be with seniors. I'd say it's the, you have to, we have to turn around because it's the juniors who are the future and they are such digital natives. So it's a massive difference between that generation and for example, my parents' generation. So I think we all agree that diversity is more than gender, but there are still 
a huge lack of how men and women has had different uh, uh, possibilities, both in, in academics, both in, 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 in the business world, and, and that's changing. And that's why I'm so really happy that the six of you wants to speak about it because it's really hard to speak about a gender uh, and saying women mean this. I want to be very clear for the listeners. These are six different women uh, solving their lives and making their choice in their way. There is no woman way to do things. There is no man way to do things. There is uh, hundreds of ways of solving uh, and or running a company or being a professor. And I think what women brings on board is a bigger space where we can act even as shy engineers becoming CEO or not shy uh, becoming engineer or professor. I mean, it's, it's um, uh, yeah. So I'm just saying to the listeners, none of us are talking on behalf of a whole gender. <laughs> we are just examples here of, 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 of things. So I think it's time. I mean, it's gone 45 minutes, ladies, already. And we've just touched the, the some of the topics that we really wanted to talk about. But I think maybe we should also um, involve some of the listeners because there's a lot of people watching here now. And I see there's a lot of uh, uh, things happening uh, in the chat. And if Andrea is here, uh, yeah, maybe I should pick out some questions for you. Let me, are you ready to answer some questions from the listeners? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of activity here. Uh, that's really good. Um, see. Let me see. Oops. Maybe, Andrea, maybe you want to guide a little bit here, or should I just take some? Here is, is someone who says that for women in tech specifically, um, we need to have network and organization. And uh, she's mentioning um, a group in, in Berlin. Uh, it's called Frauenloop. Uh, I don't speak German, but uh, so what do you ladies here think about organizations and networks for women and tech, women and CEOs? What's your take on that? Just raise your hand. Um, do you want to start, Luisa? Are you part of a network for women? Not at one. Uh, yes, I'm part of the, not at one, but I'm part of other networks. Of course, networks are very important uh, because we have to create this ecosystem that I was talking about. And uh, the more you are inserted in an environment that can coach you, that can mentor you, uh, the best you can do. But this is not, and I would like again to highlight this question, this is not just because of women, it's not just because of women. It's because of society and the economy. Because women are a huge, women in tech, as we see, are a huge economic resource. And it's very stupid. And we cannot afford in Europe to lose it. So uh, all those networks that put together uh, women, uh, that open opportunities, that create discussions, of course, they are very benefit for everybody, for the women and for the society and for yeah. the economy. Absolutely. Anyone else want to comment on the network? Are you part of networks, Sandra? I'm not. I'm not part of uh, of any network in particular, but I think it it would be very useful. Um, at Ghent University, we do have these smaller initiatives, for instance, like mentor mentee programs, where I remember that uh, during my postdoc, I was then mentored by a female professor who was already like a very senior, appointed for more than fifteen years, and I remember we had then several. Um, yeah, discussions uh, also, uh, uh, basically, she was then explaining how she was handling work-life balance and so on. And I remember that I was very impressed when she was telling that she had three kids. And um, I checked her CV in advance because I didn't know her personally in advance. Uh, and uh, then I remember that I was like, 
yeah, when, when coming home thinking, ah, okay, it is possible to effectively yeah. be successful uh, in work, in careers, and, and still combine it with even three kids. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, that was very, uh, yeah, reassuring that it was a good choice mm -hmm. uh, and, and that it was feasible to, to stay at university. And that a bit uh, also comes back to the comment that Christina made uh, related to uh, being a role model. Yeah. that we have to dare to be a role model. And I think as professor, it, it already starts with being a role model for your PhD students. Uh, I yeah. remember at one PhD defense, uh, the parents of, it was a, a female PhD student, and the parents came to me at the reception after the defense and they were saying, ah, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, because our daughter is uh, is so excited uh, after this PhD work. And uh, she came home and she was saying like, ah, uh, I can be successful in my career and still combine it with the, with the family life. Because yeah, Sandra has twins and she manages to, to do everything to combine everything as well. So I can yeah. do the same. And when Christina was mentioning the role model, uh, I was thinking about that that uh, great um, compliment from those parents, but at the same time, also my mentor years ago at Ghent University, who was actually then also mentioning that some days it was harder to combine the two. So hearing from others, it, uh, also coming back to the chaos, Anita, you were mentioning, now and then yeah. chaos is not bad at all. No, uh, it's good. Voila, we get through it and you yeah, have to exploit role models and, and yeah. also try to be one ourselves and not always be too modest like Christina was saying. Yeah, excellent. And Valeria, you had a, you had a comment? Yeah, I, I think networks are extremely important for what was just said, the, the, being a role model and making sure that the new generations understand that everything that we are experiencing is possible. But at the same time, we don't have to inquire into the other problem that we are kind of vocal amongst ourselves. We actually need more vocal outside the women's world and make sure that we are acknowledged for what we have achieved and for what can be achieved. So yeah. on one hand, I'm very, very pro networking among women, but at the same time, we have to be vocal and we have to lose our shyness because yeah. this is what uh, men don't have. Men outsell themselves so well. Uh, and I have the fear that women kind of bind within women and they are a little bit less vocal um, in the broader sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And we all have our styles, right? Correct. Uh, and I think bringing uh, more people and more women and more diversified team onto top management because we this is what we're talking about. You are professors, uh, innovators, entrepreneurs, building companies. That's mainly not a choice everyone takes. Not everyone wants to be that. It's a personal choice to actually, uh, it, it's like sports, you know? You're not just jogging. You're entering, uh, uh, you know, uh, championships. And, and, and that means it, it's not enough just to jog a little bit every day. You know, you have to have a whole uh, setup uh, to become best in sports. And so is it in business. So is it in academics. So is it in, 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 in EU. You know, it's a personal choice to step up and do that role. And, and, and most people, I would say most people, they don't want to do this. So um, and thank God you did. So I just want to thank you. Um, our time is out. It's been a pleasure uh, to meet you. I know Valeria from before uh, in the European Innovation Council. I'd really like to um, log off and just talk more to you ladies, but I will uh, connect with you on LinkedIn. And I hope also all our listeners will connect with you. And uh, we're moving slow, but in the right direction. And the best of luck for all of you with the companies, with the professorships, Louisa, with everything you do, with the red carpet kind of work that you do for uh, generations of women, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Good luck all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you for this nice bye. talk. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.